Imagine a civilization so advanced that it builds a structure around its stars to harness nearly all of its energy output. Well, recently, scientists have found several structural signatures in our own Milky Way galaxy. The structure we're talking about is the Dyson Sphere. You might have heard about it in the news, but do you know how they arrived at that conclusion? Don't you want to understand the process that led to this fascinating discovery? The explanation is simple, yet intriguing. Let's begin with a concept that started our search for extraterrestrial civilizations. We're exploring a groundbreaking idea that helps us understand how advanced civilizations might develop and harness energy. Russian astrophysicist Nikolai Kardashev proposed a concept called the Kardashev Scale. The Kardashev Scale categorizes civilizations based on their energy consumption capabilities. The original scale had only three types, but there are more levels now. A type one civilization, also called a planetary civilization, can harness all the available energy on its home planet. Imagine a society that has complete control over renewable energy resources like solar, wind, and geothermal power. They can manipulate natural phenomena like weather, earthquakes, and volcanoes. They may have even colonized nearby celestial bodies like their moons and neighboring planets within their solar system. This level of advancement might seem futuristic, but it's the first step on the Kardashev scale. Currently, humanity is around 0.7 on this scale, utilizing a mix of fossil fuels, nuclear power, and renewable energies. A type of two civilization, also known as a stellar civilization, has advanced to the point where it can harness the total energy output of its star by constructing megastructures like a Dyson Sphere or Dyson Swarm to capture stellar energy. Imagine the technological marvels required to build such structures and the ability to explore and colonize their entire solar system. They might be using high-level antimatter, fusion, or other high-energy processes for even more power. With mastery over the fundamental forces of nature, a Type II civilization would be capable of incredible technological advancements, possibly even manipulating space-time itself. Finally, a Type III civilization, or a galactic civilization, can control energy on the scale of its entire galaxy. They utilize the energy output of billions of stars and have the ability to traverse and colonize the galaxy, possibly using technologies like wormholes for faster than light travel. What might seem far-fetched to us, a type three or type two civilization? You might say both, but type two might not be so far from reality check. The Dyson Sphere might not be just a fantasy. In 1960, physicist Freeman Dyson proposed the idea of a theoretical construct called a Dyson Sphere. Dyson theorized that as civilizations grow, their energy demands would increase exponentially. When a civilization reaches type two, its hunger for more power grows, leading it to seek out new forms of energy. For this, they might use the Dyson Sphere structure to harness the energy of their host star as one among many forms of energy conversion. These structures represent a potential techno signature that may be hidden in public data collected from large astronomical surveys. So scientists started digging. The primary observational signatures of Dyson spheres include the optical dimming of the host star due to direct obscuration and waste heat emission from the absorbing structure. To search for Dyson spheres, astronomers use photometric surveys covering visible, near, and mid-infrared wavelengths, examining up to a billion targets. What we see with our own eyes is in the visible spectrum, but the survey has additional data on the infrared spectrum. Why do we need these specific data? Well, some animals like snakes, bugs, and bats have senses that work in the infrared spectrum, enabling them to hunt warm-blooded animals. The same goes for stars. Anything that glows has already emitted infrared light, which is a critical key for astronomy. The whole project, called Project Hephaistos, was started by a group of scientists from various institutions around the world. Their aim was to find partial Dyson spheres in the Milky Way by analyzing data from the Gaia DR2 and WISE surveys for infrared excess signatures. They analyzed less than a billion stars using optical, NIR, and mirror surveys, as well as parallax distance data. This data serves a great deal in filtering for the search for Dyson spheres. The parallax distance data provides the distances of stars from Earth, making it possible to reject other point-like sources of strong MIR radiation, 
such as quasars, while not ruling out stars with quasars in the background. If you might ask, why rule out quasars? The primary signature of Dyson spheres is excess thermal emission at mid-infrared wavelengths, but so does the circumstellar dust structure from young stars. Therefore, the excess infrared emission is valuable, but requires filtering criteria to distinguish dust from young stars as false positives. The same goes for quasars. It's also been proposed that Dyson spheres and similar radiation harvesting megastructures could be constructed around various stellar mass objects, including white dwarfs, pulsars, and even black holes. However, for this search, the possibility of a Dyson sphere is limited to main sequence stars. Stars that have reached the adult stage with hot, dense cores fusing hydrogen into helium to produce energy. So, the journey to finding the Dyson sphere starts here. There are several stages to this. The first stage is to collect data from different photometric sources such as Gaia, Two Mass, and Allwise surveys under optical and specific infrared wavelengths. Additionally, they collected data on stars located within a maximum distance of 1,000 light years. Initially, the sample comprised 5 million sources, but after applying strict conditions and criteria, it was filtered down to around 320,000 stars. Second, they determined how well the photometry of the stars in the data catalog resembles that of hypothetical main sequence stars hosting partial Dyson spheres. This requires understanding how the photometry of stars changes when surrounded by a Dyson sphere. All those data sources were tested against a best fit Dyson model for each. And from there, a large pool of generated models underwent a grid search to eliminate those with high errors between observed and predicted data. This filtering process reduced the sample to only 11,000 sources. Third, using an algorithm called CNN, they analyzed the photometric data to determine if any of these sources exhibited features associated with nebular regions. Young dust-obscured stars or stars associated with dusty nebulae often appear as false positives. This filtering process narrowed the sample down to around 5,000 sources. Fourth, they used photometric surveys from specific infrared bandwidths to analyze images for any explanation of an infrared excess due to natural origins. They looked into the emission of hydrogen alpha photons, circumstellar accretion dust, multi-star systems, and star probability. This process filtered out close to 600 sources. Fifth, when examining photometric data, it's crucial to distinguish the target source from the background, which must be point-like sources. It's similar to finding the difference between a blurred and a clear image. To pick a good signal from the background noise, they used a signal-to-noise ratio, filtering out irregular sources and those blended with background noise. This left only 368 sources for the next step. Finally, in the sixth stage, they conducted a one-by-one -one visual inspection of each star's optical, near-infrared, and mid-infrared images to reject problematic sources of mid-infrared radiation. They look for star eccentricity by comparing optical and infrared images, checking for false positives in nebulae regions and other point-like sources. Among the 368 sources, only seven were found to match the final possibility of a Dyson sphere hosting their star. The group of scientists relentlessly looked for other explanations besides the Dyson sphere. They came up with several possibilities, but none provided proof. They conducted X-ray scans to rule out the presence of young stars, which tend to slip through the criteria, but found no evidence of such slippage. Finally, they speculated that the observed phenomena might be warm debris of some kind, but the type of star that would typically be present with such debris was not found in all seven cases. All of the final stars were M-type main sequence stars. This leads us to speculate that these stars might be hosting partial Dyson spheres constructed by type II advanced civilizations. The scientists clearly stated that it is essentially impossible to prove the existence of a Dyson sphere based on photometric data alone. Therefore, this search can be considered a standard search for infrared excess sources, biased toward excesses consistent with a Dyson sphere based on their bright mid-infrared fluxes in our models of what the spectral energy distributions of Dyson spheres should look like. They concluded that although these stars displayed properties that a partial Dyson sphere might exhibit, it is premature to assume the data collected is entirely correct and accurate. 
Additional high-quality data is needed for further study as this project's data came from various surveys, some of which were sufficient for astronomical purposes, but perhaps not for detecting a Dyson sphere. Better quality data is definitely needed. This project represents one of the early steps in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Sooner or later, this project will help the next mission with its analysis and study, which came with flaws, strengths, and most importantly, valuable experience. I hope you enjoyed this video. Without the help of Leonardo and Runway, this video would not be finished. You can create these Dyson spheres with much more resolution by combining Leonardo.ai and Runway. Both has released new and better AI models. It's amazing. Make sure to check out these AIs. I will give the link to their website down in the description. It's time to create yours. Thanks for joining the video. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more space updates. Until next time, keep looking up.